Hey lovelies, I wanted to hop on, I was talking to Michaela, she'll be on in a moment, but I wanted to talk about preventing a back to school hangover. I know a lot of you, your kids have already gone back to school. Um, my daughter went back to school yesterday and my son actually started kindergarten today. So I'm a little late in the game, but I wanted to give you some insight because Michaela asked me this morning, how how I'm feeling and I said I feel really great I feel really spacious my son hopped right on the bus it wasn't a big deal I'm gonna add Michaela here I wanted to share a few of the things that I did to both prepare myself for back to school and to also nurture myself during this transition period because even though school has now started, this process of transition is not over. It's going to continue over the next few weeks because the way that our lives, as you know, in my life and all of you that are watching, it's, it's very different during the summer versus the school season. Unless, of course, maybe if you're a homeschooling mom, that might be a little different. But happy to talk to you about it and learn more. So... The things that I did to prepare is I gave myself a really, really long runway, kind of just being mindful through, you know, pretty all of August. I just had it in sight and thought about the things that I need to do because a lot of times I know you get all this information from the schools with your, with your school supplies and things to send during the first day or the first week of school and then you know making sure that the kids clothes still fit because you know they wear different clothes in the summer versus school and that can be really overwhelming and I know in the past I have usually gone away the last week of summer and not prepared before leaving which is you know just poor planning but I've matured and figured out a better method so I did end up traveling the last weekend of the summer but it actually was really really spacious because I prepared so I went ahead and ordered the school supplies ahead of time and if there were things that were missing I did have one day where the kids and I had no plans and we just kind of filled in those gaps so planning ahead was super super helpful and then of course here in the group and I participated in like kind of resetting my morning routine because I knew that I had been allowing myself to wake up between six and seven because I knew I had a later start time to my work week and when, when the nanny would come over to watch the kids. But with the school schedule, it's about an hour earlier. So the bus is here at around 8.15. So, you know, and we don't like rushing out the door. So I kind of have been just mindful and training, my, like retraining my brain over the past month to wake up at five because five is a perfect amount of time. It gives me a little bit of flex if, you know, a kid does wake up during the Amazing. I, I was waking up at five. <laughs> it's, I'm just so like, uh, one day. <laughs> yeah. Sure I, I mean, it's easier. My kids. Yeah. So I'm sure once she goes to school and with the work that we do, I will have that sort of routine, but like everyone is different in that spectrum too. Which right. Is and you also have a child that wakes up a little later. So it's okay to wake up later, especially because you work from home and have, you just have that flexibility. And I just, I happen to have kids that wake up between six and seven. So if I give myself an hour before the, the earliest that they might wake, then I'm safe and, and not safe. I'm always, safe, but I am, I, I know I have the flexibility to get my full, the, my ideal morning routine in. So, right. and then, but the, the interesting thing is, is that last week when we were doing the morning routine reset, I was still kind of, I was trying when we were still home to, you know, get up early and everything. But then when we were traveling, you know, we were in a hotel and at another house and we were all over the place. So I let myself, so, so it was like, I was, had a, a mindful awareness, but I also gave myself the flexibility. It, it was just this kind of beautiful 
just flowing with it. But then when I started, like, and then it worked out really nicely because when we came home, um, my kids usually would have had to go see their dad, but we switched. And so that was really nice. So the kids ended up having some downtime at home. They really needed just to just do nothing at home after running around. And then I was able to set, set myself up. We had got, already gone to the grocery store, all those things. And then the other part that I highly recommend is if you are packing lunches for your children, do it the day before. And it, I mean, it saves you 15, depending on how, I mean, I take time. To I, do, I, I do the up. same thing. My yeah. child doesn't go to school, but if I prepare the meal, the day before, even if it's just, you know, like getting the snacks ready, like it saves so much time in the morning because in the morning, there's only a short window that I have with her that we can like play and connect. And I don't want to spend all that time, like just preparing the food for her, you know? Right. Well, so it's, it's a nice, um, it just feels better, you know? And the whole purpose of the morning routine is to constantly refine, you know, and, even if you do, you know, we did a morning routine menu, even if you have a certain menu that you want to follow and you're just like not there yet to kind of have that as your goal, you know, and, um, you know, taking a look at it each week or every day and, you know, how can you have more of that, you know, and where do you need to change things throughout the day? Like, you know, setting the lunches for the evening, because it does like we're transferring our energy onto our kids and, you know, it's such a big transition for them to go to school and be apart from us, you know, and go, you know, from summer mode of like being super playful to being super structured. And then if we're allowing ourselves to be nicely structured um, and giving ourselves the space, we're transferring that energy onto them and that will give them more confidence, more success in school. They'll be able to come back you know, happier and share like fun stories rather than, you know, if we're scattered and we're like, ah, oh, you know, your clothes and this, and, you know, they feel that. And then, you know, like the episode in, in yesterday's podcast, um, you know, tantrums are just the way of them communicating, you know, so they're trying to tell you something. So if, if something is off with them, it's a mirror that something is you know, off within you. And it's not a judgy thing. It's just take a look at, you know, where you need to be more present, where you need to take more deep breaths, you know, um, if you need to take a couple minutes during the day to like, just to yourself, like, you know, find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because it pays off greatly um, right. to have. That. So, yeah. So just adding like, one little thing from the menu each week. You yeah. know, it doesn't have to be all at once. So, so the thing, so, you know, I talked a little bit about how I prepared myself. And so now we're all in, we're in it. Right. And I know already I have some friends that are, are actually going back to school themselves. So they're in grad school and so they're back at it. Right. So there was summer and, you know, going camping and doing all the fun things. And now it's, you know, work and it's going back to school and, um, and getting totally overwhelmed because suddenly you have all these things on schedule. Like I'm talking to my, my kid's dad and, you know, there's Girl Scouts and there's, you know, there's open, kid open houses and there's birthday parties and there's all these things that we're having to coordinate. Right. But the thing, the thing that I gave, I gave some advice to one of my friends who just started grad school and she saw the things that she needed to do this week. And she was freaking out because she felt when she saw that it was like, she thought it all had to be done right then. And so mm. knowing that you don't have to do that. And so this is kind of like, my brain really works well with that kind of thing where it's like, so I kind of broke it down for her. Okay. When do these things be done? How, how long are the videos that you need to watch and like breaking it down? And so I'm really good at that. And so that might not necessarily overwhelm me because I'm mm -hmm. so logistical, but for a lot of us, we're not. And so, but no, yeah, and you, that you have doing nothing, 
right. yeah and then you feel guilty you feel overwhelmed and that's where everything stems from like we're all we're constantly going to have a to-do list like we're never going to check off all of our you know items right. you know but it's but we have control of moving things around putting things in order placing things in a day like you know we talk a lot about this in one of our master classes on how to manage your time and we really go deep into it within our course, you know, our online signature course that we have. And when we work with women one-on-one is we get to do this work and, um, you know, take a look at your specific schedule and how can we move things around to serve you best. So then you can have more energy and you could be a better mom and, and a partner. And actually then you'll, you'll see how much more space you do have where then you'll be able to put things in that, that really right. will fill you. Right. Right. So you're doing, 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 and literally feeling depleted and still feeling like nothing is getting done. Right. And yeah. a lot of times, like if you get to, if you, if you see it and then you get overwhelmed, a lot of times what's going to happen is your like the overwhelm is going to prevent you from getting anything done. And then it's, you're just going to build and then you crash. And so that's what I was trying to help my friend with today is trying to prevent mm-hmm. her, you know, we're on day one here. We can't crack, yeah. you know, so mm-hmm. it's really, really important to just be mindful of that. And just to, like when you look at all the things and all the papers and all of that stuff that's coming in to know that you don't have to do it all right now, it'll, it'll get done. And that's, yeah. yeah. It's like setting yourself up to run a, um, a marathon and you're already wanting to be, <laughs> At the end point, right. like it doesn't, it cannot physically happen. You literally have to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Right. But then there's a, pre- pre- um, you know, preparation stage before that as well. Mentally, physically, it takes months. Right. Uh-huh. And so same thing with these things, um, you know, you have to prepare yourself for these things and you know what things will happen. You will, you know, you'll get more tired than you think you will. Right. And you'll need more water, you know, along the way. And and you'll need a support system to cheer you on. Same concept here, you know, like you will get exhausted. You'll need more nourishment than you think you need. You know, you'll need right. more you know, friends in your corner. You, you'll need your tribe. You'll right. need to be able to check in and say, okay, here I am. This is what I need. Right. Um, so it's all part of it. Yeah. Right. So the thing that, that we want to reiterate is that it doesn't, you don't have to run the marathon right now, right? It's, it's all bits and pieces. So we want to prevent the overwhelm. We want to prevent the crash because if you right. crash before the marathon, you're not going to ever run the marathon and then you won't attain your, your big goal of running the marathon. <laughs> so, so anyway, we've kind of gone a little bit off track, but we, so the things that have helped me is to prepare the lunches in the evening I'm also doing a new thing where we're picking out clothes the night before. So today, while I was showering, I said, all right, kids, I'm going to go take a shower. Can you get dressed? And yes, I have clothes that are old enough to get dressed, which is like magic. It's like the best thing ever. But I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, so hi, Adriana. Um, so that is huge. It's like just it's it literally took me one minute to pick out Brody's clothes and Ava picks out her own clothes so it wasn't anything extra but there's not that battle in case you know because the kids are going to be tired too like right now like they were actually okay this morning but you know after a couple days of back to school they're going to be tired you know they're going for a you know it's you know from the time that they they sorry the cat's like pushing against me um Adriana says she does the same thing. Those, yeah, it's, it's such a simple, simple tool. So, you know, this morning my kids were okay, but after, you know, having, let's see, they, by the time they leave the house around eight and get home, so it's like a, you know, six, seven hour day. These little kids. And I know my older daughter, they do not have as much time to eat <laughs> as they should. And so they're not being fueled enough either so it's just something to be mindful of is of setting yourself up for success is also setting them up for success also an idea is 
thinking of a snack right now. Like, what are you going to give your kids when they get home? Because I know when I pick up my daughter from daycare and the days that I'm just like, oh, now I have to make dinner and like kind of doing everything when she's there, it's already too late. You know, she's already hungry. Then, you know, so like preparing like literally ahead of time what you're going to do, like knowing you're going to pick out clothes tonight. So that's on the to-do list. You know, what are they going to have, you know, to nourish themselves and give them nourishing foods, you know, don't give them a snack that will just like spike their energy levels and sugar levels up and then crash. And then they'll be irritable. You know, um, this is the time to try new things as well. New foods, tell them like you're older now, like, you know, you need to be able to feel good. And this is the stuff that like, give them options as well. Right. Um, Right. Giving options. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the last thing that I wanted to say is that, and we're going to talk more about this next week, or we're going to start talking yeah. more about it next week, but so, you know, I'm, I'm talking about it now, you know, the, the lunches in the evening and the clothes in the evening, and for me, I am going to bed early. <laughs> I'm like, I know that this is a transition period, so I am like a lights out meditation guided meditation on at 8 30 like it's just happening I just and even though I'm not feeling depleted like I said I'm doing preventative maintenance and it's you know what it's easier too because it's getting darker earlier so it's it's easy I'm just kind of listening to the seasons as well so that's just a few tips that's helped me because this is the, the my daughter's in fourth grade my son just went into kindergarten And this is the first year that I am just feeling super spacious with it all, which is also both my kids just got on the bus, which is, again, magic. So kids getting dressed by themselves and kids getting on the bus, magic. Awesome. (laughs) The fairy dust. (laughs) Um, So, but I'm feeling really spacious and I'm, my kids went to school and they were happy and, you know, my son, he's going to, going to, you know, uh, he was in a, school that had less than 100 people to a school that has 900 people. I mean, this is huge for a little guy. And he went off on the bus smiling and there weren't any tears and I don't feel anxious or any of those feelings. And I think because we really gave ourselves that long runway and we'll continue, you know, to kind of nourish ourselves. Really be present with your kids when they come. So, you know, maybe have an hour where you don't even touch your phone, you know, and just like literally sit with them on the floor Mm -hmm. um, and just give them what they need, which is you being fully present, listening, you know, they'll start opening up more and things like that. But, um, you know, it's such a big difference when you're able to do that, do, do that rather than like, you're busy and like, Oh, Hey, how was your day? Like, you know, kids feel when you're disconnected and when you're checking out, right. you know, it makes a difference where then, um, you know, you will have that space in the evening for yourself because yeah. you filled, up, you know, and you filled yourself up because that, that is filling, right? Right. right. Um, so no, you know, no screen time for yourself, healthy, you know, healthy meals together, do things, you know, go for a walk. It's still nice outside. Um, you know, do things like that, but like prepare for that now, like during the morning time. Right. Right. Um, and also be mindful of activities. Like one thing, so my son did not have school yesterday. So I was, I was so excited to have one-on-one time with him because I, I rarely get it. And so I thought, Oh, it's his last day of summer. We'll go to the beach or we'll do something fun. He did not want to do anything. And I just didn't him. I just was like, this is what he needs. We had a busy weekend. He just needs to chill. So I know it's hard. Like it feels like we have to, to like entertain kids or something, but I think that a lot of the relationship building and all of that all really, really important things, they happen at home and just chilling at home. They really do versus that busyness and feeling like you have to have each kid in three activities. You know, so it's just something, you know, obviously, if your kid wants that, then go for it. But I know my kids uh, really thrive on having, having some downtime. Yeah. 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 Everyone is having a beautiful week and also look at it as like a prep week for next week. So if you didn't get to do something this morning or tomorrow, um, just have set that intention for next week 
to have a certain type of morning. You know, look back into our post last week, um, figure out your morning, you know, morning routine menu, the things that you want to do, and actually visualize you start doing them in the evening time, you know, go to bed early. Um, just remembering, you know, you transfer your energy onto your kids. So if you're peaceful, grounded, structured, um, you know, you'll be able to give that to them as a gift for right. school. Right. Absolutely. And so next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about evening routines and how to incorporate those into your life. We'll spend probably, probably spend September chatting about evening routines and the importance of them. Hi, Michelle. Um, and lastly, if you like what you're hearing from us, we invite you to schedule your free coaching call. And this group gets a free five call with us. We'll talk about what's going on in your life, what's working, what's not working, and help you make a plan. And like I said, you know, we can talk deeply about you know, your specific life and how we can help you get on track where you want to go, your big big goals and dreams. So the uh, website to schedule your call is Maya and Michaela.com forward slash apply. And we'll put the link down below as well. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.